morning. It is Tuesday, August 21st, 2018. And I got my new phone and it's got different features than the other one. So I'm learning how to use it. Um, so let's see, um, I didn't go to the gym yesterday like I said I wasn't going to. Um, it's just too much to drive and get to my goal and, and do all of that. Um, eating wise, I'm doing pretty good, doing what I'm supposed to be doing. It is chilly, as you can tell I have my hoodie on. It's 57 degrees, it's foggy. Um, what else? Not much else. Um, I would like to touch on some things regarding like, I don't know, like, like when you're, life doesn't revolve around you. And I'm trying to think of how to word it appropriately so that way I don't offend anybody or sound harsh. Um, but life doesn't revolve around you. And if you're not taking the time to get to know, to get to reach out to people, um, if, you know, if you're not taking the time out to get, to, you know, to reach out and talk to people and, and keep that relationship going, you really can't expect others to do it for you either. So what I'm saying is, you know, if you don't ever contact me, or the only time you contact me is when you have a question or you want something, don't expect me to reach out to you and say, hey, I'm doing X, Y, Z. Do you want to come with me? You know, like I get a lot of that, like, I am, I'm a happy-go-lucky type of person, okay? And so I really like to get people together and have fun and do things together as a group. Now, I don't like to do it every single day, every month, every week. I don't, you know, occasionally I like to get together and, and do it. And, um, you know, it used to be the tradition was at my house. Every year we would do Thanksgiving. You know, all the major holidays and birthdays would happen at my house. Well, since my kids are grown and when I left Maine, I didn't have to do that anymore. And it was really nice not to have that burden or that stress on me. And so now that I know what it's like not to have to do it, I don't really do it. Um, and it's not to say that I don't enjoy going to those type of functions. I just don't want to be the host anymore. Um, you know, I, I did that for my children all their lives. They have those memories. They have that experience. And now they get to provide that legacy. And, you know, those actions. And they get to do that. I'm just not that type of person um, anymore. I, I enjoy not having to worry about it. Not having to stress. It's a very stressful time, you know, coordinating all of that. And so it's nice not to have to do it anymore. Not to have to worry about it anymore. So, you know, I, but this past summer, you know, several times I've reached out to a bunch of people and said, hey, let's do something. Hey, let's all get together and do this. I've, I've done it several times. And, you know, I, in the past, we're in August, in the past seven months. And was turned down every single time. Everybody was busy. So I said at that point, well, I'm not doing it anymore. I'm, I'm not going to do it anymore. I'm not going to reach out. I'm not gonna put out that hand. If they want to see me, if they wanna to get together, they will reach out to me. And those who want to see me and, re and, and, and you know, they will, they have. You know, they've called me, hey, let's go do this. Hey, let's go do that. They have done that. So I know that that is, it, it, it works. Um, and I understand sometimes schedules don't work with getting people together into a big function. But, you know, that 
communication works both ways. So, you know, those people realize that, hey, yes, yeah, she does want this relationship to continue and she wants to meet with us and she wants to meet me and, and get together. So when I'm free, I'm going to reach out to her and we're going to get together. Those relationships do, you know, that does help. But then you have some people who feel that you should always, as my husband says, be on their dick or sweat them or you know constantly ask them reach out to them and say hey tomorrow I'm going to the movies you want to come hey next week I'm going out to drink you want to come and constantly invite them all the time and no that's not the case that's not how that works that's not how that works so if I reach out to you today and you tell me no I'm busy I can't do it you know if I say hey let's go have lunch next Tuesday and I and you say no I'm busy I can't do it then that ball is in your court to then follow up at some point in time and say okay I'm not busy on XYZ day so can you make that now that ball is in your court because I reached out to you to plan it and you declined so now with the ball if you really want to be my friend and really want to have a, a relationship with me you will then turn around and counteract that at some point in time it doesn't have to be the same day within the month or that. at some point in time if I don't come back to you with another offer it's your job to then come to me and if I come back to you with another offer and you're still not able to make that offer it's more important if you want to keep that relationship that now you really come back to me you make it some point quick to come back to me with another day because otherwise at what you're doing is you're telling me that I'm not important enough for you to clear your schedule or when you have a clear schedule to get me in there because you can't there is no way anybody's so busy they don't have time to meet people I don't want to hear that you have the time you make the time for all the other stuff in your life so you make the time for things that are important to you if you're not making the time for me, that means you're, I'm not important to you. Now, there are some things that come into play, you know, like location or, you know, those type of things, you know. So, like, my friend Jerry Lynn is far away. I don't expect her to drive an hour and a half to come see me, and nor does she expect me to drive an hour and a half. Maybe, I mean, we do it, like, once a year <laughs> because it's a long distance. It's just, just like driving to Connecticut. It's a long distance. The difference is, is, you know, she works crazy schedule, a uh, crazy schedule, so her schedule doesn't always coincide with my, my schedule, so we do it once in a while. You know, so there are those things that come into play, but you make time for people who are important to you. And if somebody's reached out and, you know, with their hand and said, hey, I'd like to, to, you know, hang out with you, and you don't make time for them, after a while, they're going to start saying, okay, I'm not important enough, and they're going to stop offering, and they're going to start stop asking, and they're going to start to back away, because that's what they're supposed to do, because obviously you're not important in that person's life for them to make time for you, so, you know, and it could be, it does, just because you're my sister, you're my father, you're my mother, you're my cousin, you're my aunt, my uncle, none of that makes a difference, you know, people are people and you know if you're if I'm not important enough for you to make 20 minutes 30 minutes an hour out of a day to come and hang out with me to have lunch with me to go to the gym with me to walk around a track with me you know or send a text message hey how you doing you know or have a conversation or any of that if I'm not important enough for that, I can get those clues. I get those clues. I understand those clues. And so, so do many others. And that's what, and they may not even be intentional. You know, you may be doing it just because you're taking that person for granted, but that's not their fault. That's your fault. You can't expect them to constantly put out that hand and that offer and you slapping them all the time it's just like a kid you slap a kid you tell the kid no tell the kid no eventually the kid learns no don't do that and they don't do it anymore it's the same thing you're constant if I'm putting my hand out there to offer and you're telling me no 
you're slapping me away. No, 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 no. I'm going to stop offering. It's plain and simple. You know, like I have plenty of people on Facebook who I'm friends with that I've offered, but I know the sincerity behind the no. But I'm still not going to offer again. I'm not. I'm not. And the one thing that has taught me with Kim's passing is I need to prioritize who I spend my time with. And, you know, there are people that I would hang out with or go see or make time for that really don't not that they don't deserve it but they're not our friendship is not like that for me so I'm wasting not wasting but like I'm giving that person time that I could be giving to somebody else who's more of a meaningful relationship and um, that's what is I've learned and um, I make an effort to talk to every single person that I am friends with and uh, I started that when Kim was sick and I make that effort not because I'm better than anybody or I, because I am that type of person and um, I really do care about every single person that I associate with um, but I don't doesn't that doesn't necessarily mean that I want to spend a day with you do you know what I mean so you know, it is what it is. You know, we all have things that we have going on in our lives. We just have to prioritize who's important and who's not. And you have to realize that sometimes people pull away because of your actions and your words. And you don't even realize it, you know. And um, like I said, if you're constantly telling me, no, you're too busy, no, you're not available... just gonna I'm gonna stop offering and then now it's up to you to say hey I'm doing this do you want to come and if you don't that's on you that's on you that's not on me that's not on Joe Schmo that's that's on you for not you know keeping up with that relationship and uh Sometimes people get mad at you for things that you didn't even do. They're mad at you for what they did. Because they're not mature enough to admit that, yeah, I fucked up. And, um, you know, in the beginning of this year, was my goal was to make amends for all the wrong that I've done. And, and not really make amends, but just to apologize for all the wrong that I've done. And for the most part, I have. There's a couple of people that I have not been able to get a hold of, um, which is fine. I did the best that I possibly could. And, uh, you know, I've apologized for my part in the relationship deteriorating. And um, I've gone from there. You know, I've mailed letters, I've sent messages, I've made phone calls. And,. I'm at peace with all of that at this point and they don't have to forgive me they don't have to you know want to have a relationship with me honestly I, I don't want to have a relationship with them because they'll never look at me the same way again for whatever reason whatever it is whether it's because I didn't talk to them or because I they feel I did something or because I did do something that was harmful to the relationship Um, but they, uh, it's 
somebody was flashing the lights. So there must be a police officer up ahead. So, yeah, so, but I've apologized and I'm fine with that. I am perfect. Oh, yeah, there it is. I'm okay with not having, you know, that, them rekindle that relationship. <laughs> the end of the month. I don't know why they're out right now. I guess it's close to the end of the month. Um, so that, you know, I've done that and I'm okay. I'm satisfied with the results. Honestly. Like, and I am a real person. So if I fuck up and I say, oh, you know, if I know that it was something that I did that caused this problem, then I apologize for it. And I did. And all of this stuff that I, you know, like when I wrote a letter to this person, I said, you know, I'm starting this out by saying I am so sorry for my actions and how it made our friendship fall apart. I truly am sorry for that. I'm sorry what I did. I'm sorry for what I said. I'm not asking for you to be my friend again. I'm not asking for forgiveness. I just wanted to let you know that I am sorry and it does bother me that what I did caused our friendship to end. That's real. That's real. I mailed the letter and I didn't get a response and I really don't accept, I expect a response and it's okay if I don't get a response. And that's how I started out every single one. Well, this particular one, I said something that, you know, made us not be friends. But, you know, the other ones, it was, I'm sorry for my part in our friendship falling apart. And it's true. You know? And sometimes you just have to do that. And you should mend all of those broken relationships even if it just means apologizing, even if you didn't do anything wrong or you don't know what you did wrong, just apologizing because then that makes that person feel better and it makes you feel better. And I do. And um, so that's just it. That's my, my long conversation today. Mend those broken relationships. And the weird part is, is that was the same message the pastor gave at Kim's funeral. And there's two relationships that I did not mend at Kim's funeral that I should have, but I didn't. And those are the two relationships that I feel bad that I have not. And um, I will. I just, it hurts too much right now. So, I will. I will reach out to those two people and I will amend that. So, you know what I say, the best investment you can make is an investment in you. What are you investing in you today? Today, I am investing in crocheting because I have two wreaths to make and then because of the craft fair next month, I have um, shit to make. So I will be doing that as well. Um, so that's what I will be investing after work today. I'm going to work and then after I go to work, I'm going home and I'm going to sit my behind on my bed, not even cooking dinner. And I'm going to crochet away to make these projects. I've spent like $4,000 between the t-shirts and I, it's more than that because I know that it doesn't include some of the stuff that I bought um, online and stuff. But from what I entered into QuickBooks, I've spent over $4,000 and I have not even made half of that. So I need to stop spending and I need to start making. Um, I know I need to spend a little bit more in order to get some of the t-shirts and the hoodies going, but I'm going to make a couple of wreaths, not to, to just so I have examples, and I'm going to take orders so that way they can um, have them. 
but I'm not making any to bring there. Um, I just don't have the time for that, but that's what I'm doing. So you guys have a great day and I will check in with you tomorrow. Bye-bye.